Hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. I'm Bushka, welcome back to channel, and today we'll be talking about when to push in a light. Uh, and indeed, even if you have to push in a light. I'm going to show you a couple of games. None of these are spectacular, but I, 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 look, I love driving lights. And at its best, light tank driving is a funny old science, because... A lot of people drive tanks for big damage. It's one of the reasons why TDs are so popular at Tier 10. But look at the situation I'm in here with this Type 62 Dragon. I've got to keep an eye on absolutely everyone around me. And I've got to utilize the position I'm in without giving anyone shots because I just don't have the ability to take shots. I don't have the armor profile. I don't have the pit point pool. And yet at the same time, I'm going to output damage. And that is one of the reasons why light tank driving is a lot harder for most people than they expect. You have to be able to track a lot of targets and you have to do it while, in general, being wafer thin in the armor profile. And this is why a lot of the time people get it wrong on the I should push XYZ with my light tank. People play them far too aggressively uh, at tier seven or tier ten. I'm going to I'm going to show you some tier ten batch at driving. In fact, I'm going to show you a few excerpts from a couple of games of batch at driving. Blitz as a light tank arena is very different to PC where they were developed. Uh, in PC, light tanks role is quite genuinely a spotter's role because they can get a lot done on a very very large battlefield. Uh, and in terms of a lot, I mean a lot. There is a longer game, there is a much larger map, and they will have light tank matchmaking. Or well, they used to. I don't know if they still do now, but they used to get up here tremendously because the light tank's job wasn't to spit out massive amounts of damage at all. The light tank's job was to give everyone else an eyeball and a target, uh, despite the fact that the maps are enormous. In Blitz, that's not the case at all. Uh, when you do the light tank's job of spotting people, everyone on the map can see you. Like, you can see two-thirds of the map in its natural state at any point in time. So that makes life very, very difficult. And you've got to be quite ingenious to figure out where you want to be on the map. Tanks like the Bat Chat then also come up against the issue of big ass TDs in excess of 150 millimeter guns and pretty much everyone on the battlefield can HE pen you which means your first mistake will often be your last mistake and you've got to be very very cautious with the way you move around the battlefield and sometimes that means that you're not there to do damage you're not even really there to spot what I'm doing here is causing anyone that wants to push around that corner uh, many, many issues. We have a grill behind us. I think it's a grill. And we've got me here. And we've got the STB-1 down below me. Guarding where the C cap would be. Uh, and by resetting my camo consistently and moving backwards and forwards here, what the STB and I are doing is not giving these medium tanks an opportunity to push forward. Look at our heavy tanks going down the heavy route they are blitzing no pun intended they've already cleared a td and any tds that get spotted by the heavy tanks at the other end are going to be completely visible to the td that is behind me right now doing bad things to good people i don't even have to do damage i just have to make sure that these guys don't push up and leave and clear this flank before the heavies are finished with their tds and their last heavy tank over there and the south side of the map and hence i don't really engage anyone and this is the key really uh, when to push or in fact when not to even do anything apart from be visible and be spotted and then run back around the map and it ends with me with plenty of hit points left in the tank and all the heavy tanks streaming down from behind and, and forcing them to push into that grill and me in the fe 402 1600 damage but a very very easy win because you have to take what the defense gives you in a light. Now, that isn't to say that you can't be aggressive. You certainly can. But you have to be aggressive when aggression is possible. 
If you are in very, very tight confines and you don't have hard cover between you and someone else's gun, you will get wrecked because you are a favorite target. Everyone wants, like that 268 took a random pot shot in the hope that I would be in that bush. Uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately for me, I'm not that silly and I've been around long enough to know that that ain't something that's going to get you by. Now, just like in the last game where there was nothing on offer, in this game, I'm just taking what is available. I didn't stick around to push that last single shell that I had in the magazine out through the spout. What I wanted to do was get that one shot in the 268. That was all that was available. Pull back, get another shot, reload, reset your camo and start all over again. This is the epitome of driving a light tank. You can spot, you can do damage, but it's very, very hard to do both at the same time. Unless the enemy is not just bad, but, well, really bad. So I'm going to show you one more game after this where I get the blend right and we do a little bit of damage, not massive amounts, uh, and we also keep everyone on their toes. Now, the reason you can do this in a tank, even like a batch out that is dealing with big ass TDs and such at this tier, is that the mobility of a light tank and the camouflage of a light tank are excellent. There was a huge hue and cry when the batch out was released because it didn't have light tank camo. Light tank camo is camo that is basically the same on the move as it is while stationary. And I was at Tank Fest recently and myself and several others uh, were asking, why don't we have new light tanks at tier 10? Like there's only one light tank at tier 10. And there is such a negative element to driving a light tank at tier 10 because a lot of people just drive them like a Soviet medium and that is the wrong thing to do in a batch hat. They quite simply do not have the wherewithal to deal with that kind of playstyle. You've got to be extraordinarily careful and you've got to grind in your damage one little tap at a time. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just looking for opportunities to put shots in and then we'll move further on as the game progresses. But at the moment, there's still a lot of unspotted tanks and it's just my job to keep everyone lit up if possible. And if not, then move around and find another way to do it. It is not the kind of thing where you want to get stuck. Oh, ooh, hello. Uh, that was not an ideal place for that Leo, but whatever. We'll take the hit. And the other thing with the batch out that makes it very specific is it's a light tank that's got an autoloader attached. So that means you've got to really time your reloads uh, and make sure that you're getting the most out of your DPM. Uh, that is a hard thing to do. And again, we, we take the mobility and we take off. We're just looking for action. There's the E4. We read the play very, very well there. He's looking to move up and get shots into the side of that waffle tractor. Gets a big hit in, but pays for a full clip out of the batch out. Yeah, the Leo's not happy. F you medium tank. Uh, and then we're off again. And this is far more in keeping with the close quarters driving that you get in a batch out. Look at that. I mean, the pen is an issue. The complete lack of pen, the complete lack of... the I don't know what happens there. Uh, but you can either stay there or you can start moving. And this is, this is the key. You've got to learn this balance. You've got to learn when you can actually get away with shots and when you can... You can move and shake, and the, the E100 is still carrying on. The Leo had a crack, and now the E100, and we are now motoring. Now, things are looking pretty tense and pretty tight. We've got two left in the clip. We're going to hang on to them, and we're quite happy to maybe take a shot here from the E4. He went for the HE shot. Fair enough. So he should. We've had a nice, solid angle. Ends up taking out the track. That's not such a big deal. And then we're off to the races again. The Waffle Tractor's coming around. E60. Can't do much about that. And rather than sit here and argue the point with a massive tier 10 heavy, we're pushing back in towards our big guys. Now, you've seen the movement, uh, the constant resetting of camo, the judging of the clips. It's all very, very important. And it's one of the reasons why driving these tanks at tier seven or tier 10 is such a challenge and such a reward. 
Uh, I know that there's another tank, by the way, running around somewhere. That's set seven and one. He still has to be here somewhere. Uh, he does pop, in fact, exactly where we left him. I mean, very typical of a seven and one driver. Uh, he likes his gun depression. He's at the top of the map, and there he is. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you got a little bit of love out of that. A, a good measure of where you should be on the map is really the glass tank approach. Never play it like you have more than one hit point. Like the next shot is going to kill you. And your hit point pool is worth so much more than everyone hit point pool, else's hit point pool because your hit point pool is so easy for tanks to chug through. Until next time, I'm Bushka, you're lovely, stay safe in the battlefield, and bye for now.